Hey, y'all. It is Thursday. We've got another podcast for you. Episode 177 Late Night Vision Show. We are coming live. Uh, not really live, but almost live. And we are doing these shows for y'all out there trying to bring you the latest and greatest in night vision, th- uh, thermal, hog, and predator hunting. And we've got a special show for you tonight. We are doing the state of the industry. This is one of our most popular series of episodes that we do here on the Late Night Vision Show. Uh, and to get it all kicked off, the owner of Outdoor Legacy, Mr. Jason Robertson. How you doing, bud? It is a, it's another night, man. It's, Excited to have you here. It is. And I am glad to be here. I have to tell you, I do enjoy these shows. Uh, I think the, you know, we call it the state of the industry, uh, kind of a, a play off the state of the union. But what we like about this is we get to talk about all the cool, exciting things yeah. uh, that are going on in the industry, kind of, you know, what's happening right now, what we're expecting to see yeah. uh, kind of come this fall, some things that we know about. And then we like to, right. you know, always speculate on what's coming next and see how big a fools that Hans and I can make of ourselves <laughs> trying to get our crystal balls out. But it is a lot of fun. And uh, I, I love these shows because we don't just talk about, you know, one scope or one manufacturer. We get to talk about them all in, in one big podcast. Yeah. So I'm, uh, it's an exciting show. I'm ready to do it. And, and really, you know, as we all know, all that anybody really cares about hearing about is what is new and what's coming out soon. So we've had a lot of question, questions about SHOT Show uh, this year for would would actually be 2022 SHOT Show. Uh, and, you know, at this point, they say there's going to be one. But that's when, that, you know, everybody traditionally thinks that uh, all this stuff is announced, all the new stuff. And it's kind of a little bit different these days, as you've explained here on the show before. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to talk about yeah. shot towards the end. It's actually funny you said that. I was scratching my notes to remember her to talk about shot show towards the end. Um, I want to I want to talk about that. I've I've, I've talked to another um, industry insider today, at one of the, uh, the the manufacturers, and you know, just kind of everybody's talking about shot because we are winding yeah. down the year and and getting close yeah. to january so we'll talk about that but uh yeah a lot of of interesting things to talk about on this show okay. and as always if you are interested in a night vision or thermal optic and you need advice on purchasing um, comparisons how these things work in the field give us a call you can talk to jason or i uh, you can call at 877-350-1818 uh, most of everything that we're going to talk about is, is on the website. Not everything, because some of it is very, very new. Uh, but you can find all of the night vision thermal optics on OutdoorLegacyGear.com. So please, after this show, go check all that stuff out. But so today we are talking about the state of the night hunting industry. And the last year or two, uh, it has been a roller coaster of of good, good uh, business, good, uh, you know, demand. Uh, supply is like everything else when we talk about on the phone quite often. Uh, supply is starting to catch it back up a little bit um, with the way that demand was, but it's still not where everybody wants it to be. Uh, but we're going to be talking about a lot of different brands, some of the brands you've probably heard of on this show. Some you may be new to, and if you're new to them, that's okay because a lot of times it takes a few times to see these scopes and see what they do and see them in action to really remember and have it click to whenever you're ready to purchase a scope. But so Jason, the one thing that I want to start off talking about is really how many companies in the last year uh, or even two have jumped into the thermal industry uh, and, and been, you know, putting out scopes and doing so very successfully uh, and, and really having a, a lot of, well, let's just say, Everybody got in at a pretty good time in the thermal industry by coming out with some scopes. Uh, but, this, you know, brands like Zeiss, you know, high-end day, uh, daytime optic company came in with a, uh, with a thermal monocular. You've got uh, iRay USA, uh, Infrared. I mean, they've, they've come in in the last year, and they've made a big splash, and, and there's a lot of scopes uh, that the customers have gotten into for the first time that are new to thermal, that their first thermal scope was, uh, uh, was an iRay or, or an Infrared. Uh, but you still got your, uh, you know, your your AGMs. You got your uh, Pulsars, of course, Envision, Trigicon. Uh, you know, you still got Bearing Optics. There's, there's, uh, you know, your your staples or the ones that have been there for a while, and then you get your new companies that have been, you know, new for the last year. It's all exciting to see. All it's doing is producing more and more uh, thermal optics, affordable thermal optics, and increasing the quality and the value uh, of what these what these optics include so it's really good to see uh, i 
<laughs> two years ago, and we joke about it. Two years ago, we we would sit around and say we wish that there was a little bit more competition. And boy, we got everything that we asked for and more yeah. because there's almost too much competition because now we're like, oh my gosh, we don't need another company coming into the market because uh, yeah. you know, the confusion that it adds. But there are right. a lot of different choices. You're going to be running through those right you know, here very soon. But like I said, you know, you've got IRA USA with infrared. You've got Zeiss. You've got AGM, uh, Bearing Optics, uh, Pulsar, of course, Envision, Trijicon, and all of them are really good uh, quality optics. Uh, it's just a, it's a really good time. Um, the, the phone calls that come in, it takes a little bit more time with each customer that call, comes in because you're having to explain more scopes. But at the end of the day, uh, people are getting better optics. They're getting more features. They're getting more value. Uh, and they're going out and having more fun. You know, they got a better scope than they could get, uh, you know, a few years ago for, right. for, for less money. For sure. You know, there is a lot to get into. A lot of the things you brought up there were great points. I want to really, I think, towards the end of the show, if we have time, uh, expound on some of that stuff, uh, you know, with more players getting in and kind of the dynamics and some of that. Again, like you were talking about what that, you know, means to the end user. Uh, and I'm going to just tell you, this show right here, if you're not into this, you know, if you're not interested <laughs> in this, this might be a boring show, show to you. If you're just looking this for is, a thermal yeah. scope, this this may not be the show because we're not going to review any certain scopes. We're not going to tell you yeah. which is the best one to go buy for this or that. You know, it, this is just, uh, a, again, it's an industry show. It's what what's going on and where we see the industry going. But there is a lot of guys who their main hobby and passion is night hunting. Yeah. And, you know, so I want to give an analogy to okay. I, I want to say it like this. It's for all you football fans out there and fantasy football fans. This is like the fantasy football draft before the season. And you're picking the players <laughs> and, and drafting the players. you want. Right. This is like seeing the new scope, seeing what's out there, seeing what you're interested in, seeing what you might want to get. I mean, you're right. This, this is the behind the scenes industry stuff. If you're not, if you're not hunting night hunting, uh, you know, uh, more than just a, once a year, you're probably pretty tuned into this kind of stuff, but I, uh, you're right. It is, th this is insider stuff, but Hey, there's a lot of people into it. More people. Than it ever. is. That's right. And you know, I think your fantasy football, that that's, that's a perfect example I mean, it, this is this is the the locker room talk of what's going on and the behind the scenes and the speculation right. and all that. And there's just a lot of guys who I get it, you know, say I'm just going out and shooting stuff. I don't really want to talk about it. And there's other guys right. that, you know, they've got their scope. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, if it's a digital night vision scope or it's a entry level right. thermal or the high end. They're into it. They're interested mm -hmm. in what's coming next and where the industry's going and, you know, what they might be picking up in a year or two or three or whatever. So anyway, right. with all that said, I want to go ahead and, and roll into some of this Um we're going to go in alphabetical order. That way there is, uh, we're not going in any <laughs> favorites or anything like that. We're, we're right. going to start at the very beginning and we're going to talk about AGM. Now, uh, AGM has made a huge splash on the market. So I got to thinking mm -hmm. about it. You know, we first, uh, you know, uh, you know, got in with AGM when they were really new to the market uh, it'll be two years in January 2022. So, so 2020 January. That's right, Hans. So don't correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, First so, time we saw him was at the Shot Show right before. That's right. The pandemic really kicked off. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Where you and I both came back with probably coronavirus. Came back so, with coronavirus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, exactly. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, th they really had a strong line of monoculars at the time. Uh, we weren't. Uh, you know, down on all their scopes. We weren't selling a lot of the scopes. We were really mm. on the monoculars, what we thought were a good value. Well, it didn't take long, and they started working on some scope options, and they really shook the market up for 2021, mm. introducing the uh, AGM Rattler TS-25 and TS-35. Um, those are entry-level optics in 1995 and, and $2,500 dollars. Uh, respectively, and they have just taken the market by storm uh, with those mm -hmm. two optics, done really, really well for themselves, and really established their name. They also uh, came out around the same time with their updated line of thermal monoculars, the AGM Taipans. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Man, that's just they've got three yeah. main ones: the TM15, the TM19, the TM25. Those range from basically thirteen hundred to nineteen hundred dollars. Very strong competitors in the entry to, you know, all, you know, I'd say high entry level, low mid range right. quality, but the pricing is just fantastic. So, mm-hmm. really, really good and. I think that a lot of people had kind of pegged AGM as, well, they're making this, you know, entry level or, or maybe, you know, lower mid-range stuff. And I'm going to tell you, folks, AGM is fixing to bring it to the market yeah. and they're fixing to change that perception if somebody has it about them currently. They are coming out with a slew of new optics and they're going to come out with some mid-range stuff. But they're fixing to jump all the way up into the high end 640 stuff. Mm -hmm. And that is very exciting. Um, You know, I've had the opportunity to briefly, uh, you know, test this new 640 unit. Very impressed for the short amount of time that I got to use it in the field. I did get to compare it to some other optics. Uh, I think it competes really, really well. And I want to just talk briefly about what's coming. Now, AGM probably has, uh, we're going to talk way more about their stuff. And it's simply because they've already, you know, published most of what this stuff is and what's coming. It's not here yet. Um, And I'll kind of go over some of those dates. But I don't want anybody to go, my gosh, why are y'all talking all about AGM? Well, it's because they've they've laid their playbook open for the fall. And so we've got it. And uh, I want to kind of go over quickly what this is. So uh, one thing I want to point out is that the current AGM Rattlers are here to stay. They're not going anywhere uh, for, you know, the the foreseeable future. They are a staple in their lineup. So if you just got an Mm -hmm. AGM Rattler, uh, you know, TS 25 or 35, don't worry. They're not replacing those units right now. Uh, Mm -hmm. They're going to stay in the lineup. And I want to make a point. Those units are all 384 by 288 17 microns, okay? So here's where the change is coming. First thing, uh, we're expecting to see these uh, first units probably hitting around October. You know, you know how things can get. They could get drug out a little bit longer, but I think it's a realistic. Um, There's several new 640 uh, and 384 units coming, and... Uh, there's going to be several of them that have laser range finders uh, attached to them as well. So we're going to see more laser range finder options. Every single one of these new units is going to be a 12 micron sensor, whether it's 384 or 640. And all these are going to come with, uh, you know, our favorite, the American defense manufacturing mounts Good. on the bottom of them. So that's a, a big deal. I confirmed that with AGM. So 12 micron ADM. So let's go real quick. They're going to have a Rattler TS35640. Uh, that unit is going to be a two power base mag and drum roll, please. 39.95. Folks, Man. this is going to be a 12 micron 640 thermal scope for four thousand dollars basically 39.99 is this the first sub four thousand dollar 640 scope on the market um i don't know atn might have something i don't know what i don't know i don't know what they always say i don't know what they have in their lineup we we don't normally recommend them it's probably not safe to say the the first and only but this is significant this is significant yeah I mean, this might be the first 12, uh, 640, 12, 12 micron. I don't think ATN's in any of their stuff is 12 micron. I don't, so. I don't think so. So it's going to be a big yeah. deal. 3995, yeah. two power base mag. Um, I think that's just blowing the barn doors wide open. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Rattler TS50, uh, 640, mm-hmm. two and a half power. 500 bucks more at 44.95. Again, we're expecting maybe a, a mid October release. Uh, I mean that that's the the speculation uh, on that. Next, they're going to have those exact same units. So this TS35 and 50 640 12 micron, same magnification, mm-hmm. same scope, but right. they're going to be laser range finders and those units um, will also have 18650 batteries in them okay so it's going to be everything it guts are going to be the same 
but they're going to be, again, laser range nice. finder, 18650s. Prices we're looking there are going to be basically be forty nine ninety five up to fifty four ninety five. So five to fifty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what I'm excited about. This what and those units, by the way, late fall. They could be November, December. Yeah. I mean, it's they're they're not going to be yeah. immediate. But uh, those eighteen six fifty batteries. <laughs> that's a big are, deal. Got well, me. Well, big wait. Deal. There, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> so there's th- th- more. this is the exciting part here too. Uh, there's going to be the Rattler. TS35384 12 micron laser range finder, three power base mag, 3295 18650 American Defense mm-hmm. mount. God. So, so uh, yeah, and hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go backwards here, but uh, after I, I talk about them, Rattler TS50384 12 micron LRF, four power base mag. With the laser yes. range finder, I want to be clear, thirty seven ninety five and eighteen six fifty battery. So man, I, I'm there telling went from you, being there's like, a lot going on there. There, it went from being like two or three optics in the whole industry that had a laser range finder. Four, if you're going to count with what yeah. IRA uh, Infrared doing, but now now everything's coming out is it looks like it's going to have just about a laser range finder laser it is range incredible well i guess that's the new feature you know everybody before uh internal video recording was yep. the feature that that's right the, the industry demanded and now that feature comes on more scopes than it doesn't come on so i guess the laser range finder is the new feature i think it may similar be. to that it yeah, may be yeah, and, I think so. and and so what's exciting to me about this is that you know, 18650 batteries are always oh, good. Yeah. Everybody loves yeah. that. Um, but but here's, this is this, this TS35 and, and TS50 Rattler. Now, I, I want to be clear because I clarified this because there's confusion. You hear Rattler TS35384, and you go, well, I already right. own one of those. Well, that's a 17 micron. So this is going to have a totally right. different sensor. Um, so I want to, it is a different unit, 12 micron. But laser range finder, three power. Okay, that's good. There's a lot mm-hmm. of three power mm-hmm. scopes now. I mean, we've got a lot of them. We've we talked right. last on you know last episode uh, about you know our recommendations uh, for fall 2021, uh, winter I guess 2022 of the uh, you know coyote setups, and we talked about a lot of three powers. Well, here's some more. But this this TS50, that's going to yeah. be a 384 LRF. Four power with a laser yeah. range finder for thirty seven ninety five. So that's exciting because mm. I know coyote hunters love that magnification, and we are excited. Now we got a lot that to talk is a about. Strong, it is. That it's is very a strong, strong lineup. That is, uh, man. Well, people have been asking about. It. People want to know what the quality looks like. We're going to be testing, of course, as always, y'all. We're going to be testing all the stuff. We're doing review videos, uh, so you will know when these things get in our hands you'll yes. know more information than other than what you're hearing here we just want to announce this stuff really it just gets y'all excited but at the same time uh, if you are interested in a scope and laying out the options this is the playbook so this is you it. know kind of pick pick what you want to get uh and and what you want to look at and kind of weigh the options with us you know that's but right. man that's a gosh kudos to agm they're 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 kicking butt man they, they are doing well and, and I'll tell you, we will be taking pre-orders on all of this stuff soon. I mean, if you really wanted to go ahead and do it, I mean, obviously we would do it. But, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to wait and say, hey, I want to hear a little more about them, you know, I want to get them in y'all's hands, see what you think, whatever, that's fine. Hans and I will be testing all these things uh, right. you know, before the release. Some of this stuff will be uh, heading our way ASAP, and we'd love to have your pre-orders on that and get you locked down. Uh, and ready for it so that you hopefully don't have to wait forever. Again, all those uh, are expected to be anywhere between, uh, you know, October 2021 to December. You know, hopefully October, November, but you never know. And, you know, anything can happen in this, you know, COVID world. It may get pushed mm-hmm. out. But right now, that's what they're they're speculating for. Now, I want to talk about something else before we get off AGM. And you said something uh, that's true. And you said, hey, maybe, you know, what was video recording yeah. is, is now going to be uh, laser range finders. And something that we talked about, you know, two or three episodes ago, we had never seen one of these before, uh, was a, a thermal fusion. And that was the Pulsar Trionics yeah. binoculars that, that fuse the technology mm-hmm. of, of digital, thermal, uh, put them into one unit. 
Well, AGM's getting in the game as well. They have a full lineup of Fusion monoculars, um, and those are actually spelled F-U-Z-I-O-N, so it's a little different spelling mm-hmm. than that, but if, you're, if you want to look those up on their website, that's at Fusion. Um, yeah. And they're coming this fall. They'll be with and without laser range finders. They'll have 384 and 640 models. They'll all be 12 micron. They'll all take 18650s. And the price range is going to be between 2100 and 2900. So I'm going to go back and let you do Mm. some quick math in your head here. There's going to be a 640 12 micron laser range finder monocular with an 18650 and remember, I told you the price mm. is twenty one to twenty nine hundred. So uh, that's going to be exciting. Cannot wait to see those again. Uh, mid to late fall, uh, we're ready for those. We don't have a lot mm. of info on those yet, but they will be coming, and and we'll be bringing them to you right here. All awesome. right, man, that's that is awesome. So that's it, huh? That's, that's the it. Show? That's it for the. That's it. We're closing the whole <laughs> no. show. Now that was the AGM. Got, now AGM. Uh, again, I told you that was a lot because they have their their playbook mm-hmm. open and a lot of a lot of optics here. Um, but next in line, bearing optics, another big contender yeah. in the night vision and thermal uh, world. I tell you what, uh, I said AGM rocked the world uh, this year with their rattlers bearing rocked it last year with their hogsters and are still doing it this year still doing it the the hogster 25 uh the hogster 35 and the super hogster i want to say this too uh, also had a a price drop for fall a permanent price drop on the hogster r25 and hogster i can't even say it hogster r35 uh those units both dropped about a hundred dollars so uh, you know, that's awesome. We're always glad to see prices go down and, you know, technology stays mm-hmm. the same. Um, and then the super hogster has been a giant seller yeah. for 2021. I mean, it was oh. a big seller last year, but this year it's just, oh my gosh, it's been crazy. So popular, still so popular. And you know, it, the, we talked about in the past, but the popularity is all word of mouth. People, it is. their buddies seeing it or somebody seeing a video or, or seeing a, a positive review online. It is not, it's definitely organic growth and the it, overwhelmingly positive uh, reviews that are coming out about those scopes. And, and like Jason said, still selling very, very well. Uh, people love them. Oh, those super gosh, hogsters, yeah. uh, are, you know, coyote hunters dream. But I think we got something that might replace that. You're going to talk about We got here. something uh, exciting. Yeah. I got one of these in my hand. I've been using it for a few weeks, and I am super pumped. It is the Bearing Optics Super Yoder. We did mention mm. this a little bit uh, last week on our, you know, coyote setup option. Uh, this mm-hmm. is a three power, uh, 640, 12 micron. Uh, it, you know, if you're familiar with the Hogsters or mm-hmm. a Super Hogster, uh, it looks right. just like it. It's going to be forty five ninety five, So basically $4,600. Again, three power, 12 micron, 640. Excellent image quality. Um, one thing that I really like about this unit is I feel like I can uh, control and um, adjust the image quality more than I can mm-hmm. on the other Hogsters. It is fabulous. I don't want to talk too much about it because uh, we're not going to review it here. I know I, I actually talked to Bering today. Uh, they are making some more uh, positive improvements uh, from this you know, actual demo unit that we're using now. And they said, just wait. We're going to get you another unit soon that's going to be improved over that. And uh, mm-hmm. so... I, I'm excited. I don't know what all's changing, so I don't want to go too deep and and something's getting even even better. But yes, we're uh, I'm very excited. We're talking about another thermal scope under five thousand mm-hmm. dollars in the six forty range with the three power. I mean that is oh yeah a big deal. I mean, it's another coy- big if you're deal. A, if you're a coyote hunter, this is all the scopes that we've talked about. Just about all of them have been really geared towards you. Uh, you know with the LRF versions come in with AGM with the new Super Yoda from Bearing Optics. Again, uh, you know, we will have more information about that as well. But, and there's just, 
you know, some higher magnification levels, uh, you know, some, some good options in there. It's, that's a, that's another one I'm excited about. I can't wait to share the review with everybody out there and start sharing some video. It, it is. And, uh, so, so definitely that's, will be more to come on that very soon. Now we're going to switch gears here and we're going to, I mean, I just keep saying this, like, this is another crazy, but it's true. I mean, it's been a big year. Last year was a big year. It's another big year. And now we're going to talk about IRA USA. Uh, you talk mm -hmm. about making a splash, you know, IRA came into the market, uh, at the very beginning of the year and uh, it just brought in some fantastic scopes and that have given everybody else a run for their money. And they've, they've just, it's been very exciting to watch this. And I think there's a lot more to come. Now, I want to talk about something real brief since this is a, a nerdy, you know, insider fantasy football, uh, you know, talk here. There's some confusion that people have, and this is understandable, because I was confused at first as well. Like, what's the difference in IRA USA and InfraRA? And oh, we're bad about saying, you know, well, it's the, it's the IRA Rico 384MK1. Actually, it's the InfraRA. And so here's what I want to explain. IRA USA is a, uh, is a Texas-based company that is the importer for these InfraRay scopes. They are importing them and they are selling them. They are, so they're the U.S. You know, distributor for the InfraRay, mm -hmm. the Rico uh, MK1, 384, and 640, the InfraRay Bolt TL35. Those right. scopes come in, they're sold by them, they're warranted by them. That's who brings them in. But when you mm. see something that legitimately is an IRA USA product, what that is, they are uh, bringing in their own scopes and putting their finishing touches on them. They're changing them. They're improving them mm. the way they want them to, br to be. Now, a lot of those scopes are obviously, they're, you know, infrarays that they are, uh, you know, disassembling, rebuilding, new exteriors, new housings, new software, whatever it is that, you know, they, the, the changes that they see they want to make, that's what they're doing right now. That's the Bravo unit. We've already mm -hmm. reviewed that on this show. That is the, uh, the, they call it the Rico Bravo. It's a $3,500, uh, super cool looking thermal scope. We really like it. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, and talk about new stuff here, waiting. A lot of people have been waiting on the Alpha, the IRA yep. USA Alpha. It was the first one announced, and I think what we're seeing with this unit, it's still not here. It's 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 late September when we're recording this of 21, and I know we get calls, we get emails. When is this thing ever coming? You know, it's been eight months. It's still not here. What's going on? I think what we're seeing is the struggles of manufacturing and getting things done, especially stateside uh, in right. the world of the coronavirus. Um, I think they've just, they've hit hiccups. They've had issues trying to get everything done uh, to their specs and to their standards. Uh, you know, again, the machining and all those things, assembling, it's all done in the U.S. Uh, on those right. scopes. So uh, that's just been been the, the big delay. So they are still coming. They're still in the works, uh, but they're not here yet. Another, right. go ahead. You're going to say something. No, you're, you're, well, everybody understands the supply chain issues that have been going on. And I, t they have, that was the first one they announced. And that's the one we still get a lot of calls on is the alpha people really, really interested in it. I know they're working hard to get that thing out and they want to get it out, they but they want it out worse you know, than we want it out. I mean, they, they want it out worse yeah. than we do. Uh, but that's better than, putting something out there that's not ready and Absolutely. so we've got the bravos we're te you know we've tested the bravos i'm still hunting with one uh, i love it and i i do i expect that that alpha to be uh, really good i don't think it's going to be overhyped um no. you know uh, that the, the bravo to me wasn't overhyped and it's definitely it exceeded expectations as far as uh, the unit itself but yeah i mean uh, ira usa and you talked about the difference between ira usa and I wouldn't say the difference, but uh, and, yeah, and its it, relationship to to infrared. It's confusing, and and it it's is because, and here's what it boils down to. That I just says at the end of the day, yeah. as a consumer, all that really matters is you're buying the scope 
and the same people are going to answer the phone when you call customer service. If you have a warranty, they have the same. And that's another big deal. I guess we didn't even talk about this. IRA shook the market up with offering a five-year warranty on all of their mm-hmm. optics with a five-business-day repair-replace policy. And that's that's a big deal in this mm-hmm. industry is yeah. a long warranty with with a, a a policy of how long they're going to have it. And that's, you know, because otherwise you don't know. And nobody wants to send their scope off, and you don't know if it's going to take three yeah. days or three weeks or too much you just yeah. don't know you're 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 in the dark and so that that's you know one of the big selling points for for iray so again whether you buy an infrared scope uh that they're distributing or you buy an iray scope that that they're re- rebuilding and putting their finishing touches on and, and and making the changes that they think that that hog and coyote hunters want either way it's the same basic thing but but it, it yeah. is a little bit of a difference on the back end but real quick we're gonna have to move along we're taking a long time here i know it's my fault uh they also uh, just recently announced their ILR. Uh, that is an LRF attachment that is going to be $799. And that unit is going to be something that you can add on to a, um, I was going to say IRA, an infrared, yeah, the, the Rico, uh, the, the yeah, the Rico, Rico MK1. Yeah. 384, 640, or when it comes, it will also work with the Alpha. It does not work with the Bolt, TL35, or the Bravo, right. but it is going to be for the Ricos, uh, the, the Rico MK1s, and as well as the Alpha. So that's exciting. Uh, those are in super low supply as we speak, yeah. Yeah. Uh, expecting to get those over the next couple of weeks as, as supply gets better. Um, they've also got some some specials going on for guys mm-hmm. that are buying new Rico MK ones right now. Uh, you can go to our website and check some of that out, but very exciting again, mm-hmm. more laser range finders, you know, so. more laser range finders. And, and a lot of people knew that this, a lot of people that bought the Rico 384 or the three, the 640 or the Bravo did so, uh, knowing that this la- laser range finder unit was going to come out, but we didn't know we were going to get it this quickly. So it's yep. been a, a good surprise. I, uh, a plug and play accessory. So yeah. never seen one of those. Side, it's ready. Never seen one of those. Um, they say accurate out to a thousand yards. We'll be testing it. But I mean, this is, uh, this changes a lot. I mean, if, if we start developing technology now that allows some of these accessories to be a plug and play after you purchase it, giving you the option of saying, Hey, I just can afford the scope now. I just want to get the scope. But later on, I'm going to buy this extra accessory. That that changes a lot. What it you does. know? What is that? What else could that grow upon? And and we could see. On, so, again, it's it's uh, it's exciting to see. But there's a lot of people that anticipated it, and a lot of calls when they announced it for sure. Right. That that ILR. Yeah. So um, I'm going to move right along. We're going to try to do this quick. I, I want to apologize uh, to anybody from the following brands that are listening. <laughs> we are <sighs> just running out of time, but I do want to quickly go over this. Um, Envision, uh, as you know, huge fan. Uh, the late night vision mm-hmm. show is Hans and I both of mm-hmm. Envision. They've got a pile of new optics this year. We have uh, reviewed a lot, not quite all of them. They've got the Knox 18 and the Knox 35. Those are both right. uh, uh, handheld, helmet mountable, um, weapons mountable optics. The Knox 35 is something that we have not reviewed due to supply. I want to review this when this thing becomes more readily available, uh, which I think it will be. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, this is going to be a huge seller. And I'm just yeah. excited about that. Uh, we've also got their new Halo line, the Halo X's. We've mm-hmm. reviewed uh, most of those. We've re- reviewed all but the XRF on the show. There's an X35 that is a, a two power base mag. There is a, or is it two and a half? It's two and a half. Sorry. There's a two and a half. Yeah. Then there's an X50 that's three and a half. Then there's the XRF that's three and a half that includes a laser range finder built in. And all three mm-hmm. units include 18650 batteries as well as video, audio recording, and a smartphone streaming app. So yeah. uh, that's a big, big deal. Now, 
The issue is these are so popular. They include a five-year warranty. Envision was the first company to ever do this. Uh, they started that, uh, and it made a huge hit. But this year, Envision has struggled greatly with production again. This is a United States-based company. And uh, folks, there's a lot of people that I know have been upset. I've got a lot of phone calls and emails that go, man, I'm tired of waiting. And, you know, listen, I can tell you for a fact, Envision wants to ship these scopes worse than you want to buy them. And the wait is worth it. This is, and this is what it takes in this COVID day and age to support uh, stuff that's made in America. I mean, everybody wants to buy American made and, and sometimes American made costs more. And sometimes the, you know, in this day and age, it takes longer to get. And so if you want to do that, there, there's, you know, there's been a wait all year. However, um, I did talk to Envision last week. Um, I had a great conversation. It sounds like, uh, I mean, crossing fingers here. It sounds like production is about to pick up. I think the shipments should get more frequent. Uh, they are planning on pumping out a lot of optics in the next 90 to 120 days. It sounds really exciting. A uh, lot better news than, you know, kind of what it had been through the summer mm -hmm. on production. So, again, it's not here yet. The fingers are crossed. But, uh, you know, they're talking to me about the next shipment of scopes that sounds, you know, twice as big as the last shipment. Mm -hmm. So that's always good. And so I, I think there's a lot of good things coming there. I really do. Uh, I want to, to talk more on this show about these scopes when they're more available. But right now that, you know, the availability just all summer, spring and summer, has just been really, really poor, but, but the scopes are fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, really? Uh, I mean, we, yeah. No, I, I they've just, these things were selling out before they even, I mean, right after they announced. They we're, were still filling out. orders so, that, that yeah, we took it, in the very the first of the was, year. So, yeah. And, and we're, y'all, we're not talking about $3,500 scopes. You know, we're talking about, you know, uh, yeah. 7500 8500 9500 that people were dropping money on that never, there was not one video that came out or one review. And people were back order lists and pre order lists were just filling up like crazy. So, uh, gosh, I mean, they, uh, and again, you know, they just, they, they hit all of the features that everybody's been wanting. And that's what happens when a, when a manufacturer, when a thermal and night vision company listens to the market, this is what the market wanted. They came out with it and they sold everyone that they could make plus that, you know, yeah. plus more. So it's, um, you know, they're good, they're good fortune, but like any, like you said, the struggle has hit uh, a lot of people and a lot of companies. And, and I know that they, they want better uh, and without rambling on, um, like Jason said, things like thing, things like, seems like things are going to hopefully get better, uh, going into the fall, which again is the most crucial time of year for, for a lot of you out there that are trying to get optics. Definitely. So next one, the big boy, this is the, the big player. This is the company that for, <sighs> The last four, five years has really been pushing the ball down the field. Uh, this is the company that's been innovating. This is the company that has been steadily improving quality, um, you know, bringing uh, they, they that's a, I don't want to get into it all so much. They they brought pricing down uh, in the industry mm -hmm. uh, yeah. back in 2017. And they have they've maintained a steady price uh, with their pricing since then. But the quality, the features, everything just continues to get better and better. And they are making you know everybody else bring their A game. And uh, you know it's 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 Pulsar. I mean they've just been an unbelievable force uh, worldwide. I mean this is a, a point to make that they are a European company. They sell all over. Uh, Europe, New Zealand, Australia, you know, North America. This is a, a big company worldwide, and, and they are mm -hmm. uh, just really bringing the A game. And so oh, yeah. the, the newest thing uh, right now, we don't have a lot of new things to talk about. You know, Hans and I reviewed a few episodes ago the new Trionics. I mentioned that earlier. That's their fusion uh, binoculars, which are, you know, thermal, digital night vision, mm -hmm. all in one unit. Um, you know, if you're interested, have any 
don't even know what I'm talking about. Go back a couple episodes and just search for yeah. Trionix. Uh, it's T R I O N Y X. So if you want to want to search that on YouTube, you can find our review of that. But uh, this is Try not to spell a, that ten times fast. Yeah, exactly. That's why I looked <laughs> down at my piece of yeah. paper. I don't want to screw that up. That that Y there, that Y messes me it up every you. time. Yeah. yeah, every time. So this is not officially announced in the United States. And I talked to Pulsar today just to say, hey, can can we talk about this? Is it coming? What do we? It's the uh, Digex C50. Um, this was announced by the factory in Europe last week, and it is going to be a digital night vision scope. It's going to be in that traditional Thermion desi- design uh, that they've made so popular. Uh, but it's going to be a digital night vision scope that is full color during the daylight, Mm -hmm. black and white at night. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, that's old news. Well, it's really not because Pulsar has never done this, and Pulsar has always had the highest top-end digital night vision scopes on the market. You know, the the, the Digisites Mm -hmm. and then the Digexes, they have been... They've been in the digital night vision business for a very, very long time, going way back. And just, uh, they are one of the, um, I don't know what you call them, founders, I would say, in the digital night vision industry. And so they've always had a popular line of scopes, but now uh, they have moved into, again, the full color uh, optic during the day. Uh, Don't know a lot about it other than, you know, we've read the promos. It is not, again, officially announced in the U.S., but I did confirm it will come to the U.S. Now, one thing Mm -hmm. I I should mention here, there's a lot of things uh, that people see that get announced in Europe, and they immediately think, oh, it's here. Well, that's Europe. That's not here. And sometimes those optics might never come here. Uh, Sometimes some of our optics will never go there. So there's different things for different markets, and just because it's available, uh, you know, overseas doesn't automatically mean it's available here. And if it is, it might be a wait. But but this unit is expected to come, uh, you know, maybe this fall sometime. Don't have a good ETA, but excited about that to test that. I would. Pulsar's always had great image quality, very high quality digital optics. So want to test that. Uh, don't know of any new pulsar thermals that are uh, on the lineup nothing that they've made public yet Uh, i i never trust them to not have something up their sleeve you know this year they've really uh you know made waves with the thermion 2 line the thermion 2 xq38 xq50 the fabulous thermion 2 xp50 which hans and i uh, have reviewed and just gone on and on about Uh, great great optic as well as their their helion line uh you know came out with a, the helion 2 xp50 pro which is in my opinion probably the best thermal monocular on the market and so anyway i mean pulsar is just doing what they do which is innovating building top quality optics and mm-hmm. you know putting them out there in consumers hands and and so anyway just i don't if y'all have watched this show you know we're huge fans so so moving on for time uh, Sightmark, uh, Sightmark, obviously, as you know, super, uh, you know, digital night vision scopes, the Wraiths, uh, definitely the most popular digital night vision optics on the market. Uh, the Wraith HD two power, the Wraith, I can't even say it, Wraith HD four power mm-hmm. and the Wraith 4K max. Uh, you know, last year, um, beginning of this year and then all of last year, these scopes were so hard to get. We could not keep them in stock. We had huge long list, just ridiculous. Well, these scopes are all in stock now. They have been for most of the summer. Supply is excellent on them. So if you're looking to, to get into this or, you know, get a buddy or a brother-in-law or somebody and, you know, they don't have thermal budget, these wraiths are the place to start, mm-hmm. uh, you know, $500 to, to $800. Fabulous optics. It'll get you out there in the night hunting game. And I've had people call and they say, can you really kill anything with these? And I say, listen, 
I know guys that work really hard and they are serious, more serious than maybe anybody I know. And they can kill more with a $500 Wraith than some guys will kill with a $9,500 Envision. And it's just because they want it so bad and they're working Mm -hmm. hard and they're doing it and they're getting out there. So you can absolutely, Hans and I both killed a bunch of stuff with these scopes. So. Yeah, love them. They hunt with them. You know, shot a buck with it last year. I mean, they're great scopes. the The five hundred dollar model, all the way up to the the eight hundred dollar four K. I mean, just uh, different different optics, different scopes. But uh, but again, very good quality and and like you said, very popular. People are snatching them up, buying them, and and uh, still still calling about them, still getting calls. And I had to talk to a guy today that he, he used the Photon RT. And his yeah. next scope, you know, was going to be this this wraith. So, um, man, they they just uh, if they continue to do that with with this line, they'll they'll be good. They they, will. And I I do expect more out of them too, for sure. So, last on the list, uh, Z. We go all the way to Z, and that is Zeiss. Um, as you know, we have reviewed the Zeiss DTI three thirty five thermal monocular uh, on the show. A uh, super little monocular. We really do like it. Um, it's in that uh, strong mid-level uh, price range and, you know, image quality at that $3,000 unit. Don't know what mm-hmm. Zeiss has up their sleeve. Um, I don't think it's a huge secret uh, that, you know, they're probably working on, have worked on, have completed, have thought about somewhere in that mix <laughs> a thermal scope. I uh, don't know. I uh, don't know exactly, uh, you know, don't have any real inside information other than I do believe that they've been, you know, I want to say working on it. I don't know. Maybe it's considering mm-hmm. it. If it, it's <laughs> tomorrow, they may announce it. So it shows what yeah, I know. Exactly. I really don't know, but I, I do fully expect to see a thermal scope from them. Um, right. I think it'll be interesting as time goes on to see. Now, I'm going to quickly, because we've run out of time, but I know there's some brands here that people are going to say, you didn't mention these. Why? And uh, I think that they do deserve a mention of, of maybe what they are. And, and I'm not going to, we don't have time to get into why we didn't mention them, but we've got ATN, we've got Burris, we've got SIG, and we've got another huge one, and that's Trigicon. And uh, it doesn't mean that we don't like all of these companies, okay? I mean, Trigicon is, is a, you know, we're, we're fans. They make super optics, American made stuff. But uh, between, especially the ATN Burris SIG, We've said before, we've kind of got into some of this uh, on some different shows. We just don't see these optics as being something that we're comfortable recommending as a good buy currently for night hunters. And that's mm-hmm. what we do on the show is we bring you what we believe are um, optics that we can rely on, optics that, that have the customer service to back it up, that they bring a value to the market. And so I don't believe that that all these brands are bad or anything like that. I just think there's, I don't think they bring anything that is unique that competes well necessarily against the competition. And for whatever, there's all different reasons. And again, we're not going to get into all of it. Trigicon, again, we've reviewed some of their optics on this show. Love them. Mm -hmm. Uh, They've got, you know, they got a new scope. They've changed some stuff up. But I, I feel like they're kind of rearranging the deck chairs, that they're not really improving the optics, the, the image quality. They're mm-hmm. taking the pieces of the puzzle and mixing them up a little bit. And I just tell you, when we're talking about this kind of money, this high-end mm-hmm. thermal like Trigicon is in, especially with these new Envision Halo Xs, we just have to put our eggs in that basket. Now, the day that Trigicon changes that and they jump out here uh, with some great new image quality that I think just, you know, is competing toe-to-toe um, where it used to be. I mean, it used to compete toe-to-toe, but I think the market moved right. past them. When they get back right. there, we'll be talking about them and review them. I think Trigicon's a fabulous yeah. company. Uh, yeah. But again, that's why we didn't mention them. Nothing personal. Uh, right. One thing I'd also like to mention, just talking about state of the industry, uh, you know, uh, Leupold is out of the market. They never had a scope. They had the little uh, LTO trackers. Uh, they went through several versions mm-hmm. of that LTO tracker, the HD, the the HD2, and I don't know what all. Mm-hmm. They also had another one. I can't even remember what it's called. It was kind of looked like a little 
GPS device you kind of held in your hand. Um, you know, they were exciting five years ago, four years ago, um, yeah. five, I guess probably it was, but the market moved way past those optics and, mm -hmm. uh, they just hung it up. Uh, everybody was always waiting to see them have a scope. Again, I'll say this and something will happen and, and you know, they'll come out with one at shot yeah. show, but, uh, I don't foresee it happening. Not at this point, not closing all those optics out, not introducing anything. Uh, I, I believe, you know, my, my speculation and kind of what the, the inside industry hubbub is, is they're done. Um, maybe they'll do something in the future. Uh, if, if I'm all proved wrong on this, no, no problem there. My, my ego mm. is, is not easily damaged. I'm no, okay I, with being wrong, but uh, I think they're gone. And so, Hans, I'm going to let you have the last word here because I know we've gone long. Um, I, I wanted to talk about some other stuff, SHOT Show and some of this. I think there is great speculation right now uh, if it's actually going to happen mm -hmm. in Las Vegas in January of 2022. Um, I talked to somebody today uh, who's in the know, and he believes it won't happen. Um, I, I, to be honest, I hadn't even considered it. I've been so busy doing everything else. I really wasn't even thinking about it. I mean, hotel rooms are booked. We're booked for the show, ready to go. Um, but, but then I got to talking to this guy and he's like making a point about a lot of what's going on in Vegas. And I think there's been some, you know, questions being floated to the vendors by the national shooting sports foundation. And so anyway, who knows what's going to happen there. Um, again, there's a lot more I'd love to get into. We may have to, to break it up into a, another show sometime, but, uh, that is my rundown. I know y'all are tired of hearing me talk, so I'm going to let Hans give his two cents on all this and, and get y'all out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to say this. At the beginning of the show, before we started, he said, man, this list, if I just read through it, it'll be done in 10 minutes. So what else are we going to talk about? And here we are, That's right. you know, bu bumping an hour. <laughs> but no, this this state of the industry, I think, is what we just outlined is, is healthy. Uh, still growing, uh, still more stuff coming in. Uh, there, there are more optics that are being announced, it seemed like, every couple months or so. Uh, and it does look like inventory is on a lot of these things is better than it was a year ago. So I think that's a lot to be optimistic about and happy about. This is the time of year. This is We're getting into the busy time of year. This is when uh, most people are out uh, on the land getting ready for deer hunting. They've noticed they got hog problems, coyote problems. They want to take care of them. And they call up and say, I need a thermal scope. We are getting into that. And and right now, like I said, uh, inventory is, is very good uh, considering where we were a year ago. And uh, I do uh, expect with all of these new optics come out, that just means one thing for me and you, Jason, is we've got a busy next two or three months with all these optics that we've got to we take a look, take a look at and review. So uh, that just means more hunting and more fun uh, <laughs> for us to get to go test these things. Jason and I will actually be together uh, hunting very soon, next couple of days, so we get a chance to see each other and hunt with each other again. And uh, we'll, uh, we are, uh, I wouldn't say each other's lucky charm. <laughs> so maybe the opposite, uh, the opposite. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Last last couple of times we've done pretty good. But with that being said, thank you all for joining us. This has been episode one seventy seven, y'all. We went through a lot of different stuff, and uh, we really appreciate it. if you made it and hung on this long. Uh, we appreciate it. We will be back soon. Uh, next week, actually, with another episode of the Late Night Vision Show to find any of the scopes that that are already out and that you've heard us talk about and review. You can find it on OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can call and speak with me or Jason, and we'd love to talk you through the buying options if you're interested in buying an optic. It's 877-350-1818, and you can find Jason on the socials at Outdoor Legacy, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. You can find me on YouTube at Hans ETX uh, and also on Instagram at Hans ETX. Uh, so we appreciate it. All right, folks, if you made it this far, you are a trooper. Uh, you need to you gold uh, star. bend down, look underneath your chair, and there should be keys to a new car. If it's not there, call <laughs> Oprah. Yeah. But, folks, we hope you enjoyed yeah. it. We do appreciate you uh, coming back every week and, and putting up with Hans and I. And uh, hope you got some enjoyment, entertainment, knowledge, something out of it. Uh, if you didn't, come back next week, and uh, we'll probably do the same thing all over again. Uh, all look right. forward to seeing you all then. Between now and then, you all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.